about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea and about the angels singing and that old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood
I am the Lord, I'm the Almighty God. I am the one for whom nothing is too hard. I am the shepherd and I am the door. I am the good news to the bound and the poor. I am, I am, I am the righteous one and I am the lamb. I am the ram in the bush for Abraham. I am the ultimate sacrifice for sin. I'm your Redeemer, I'm the beginning and the end, I am, I am, oh, I am, I am, I am Jehovah, and I am the King. Messiah, I am David's offspring. I am your high priest, and I am the Christ. I'm your Redeemer, and I am the light. I am, I am, oh, I am. bread. I am the wine. I am your future, so leave your past behind. I am the one in the midst of two or three. I'm your tabernacle. I'm your jubilee. I am I am love, I am power, I am your freedom, this very hour I am, I am, oh I am, I am. Judge turn my way. It looks like you're guilty. Now what do you say? I spoke up your honor. I have no defense. But that's when the mercy walked in. Mercy walked in and pleaded my case. Called to the stand, the God saving grace. The blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven. There and wondered how could this be that someone so guilty had just been set free? 
my chains, they were broken. I feel born again. The moment that mercy walked in, the mercy walked in and pleaded my case. The call to the sand, the God saving grace, the blood was.
we sure appreciate these young folks that came our way and they uh when they're not out singing they're here so we appreciate them being here and uh singing for us tonight just good kids well young men and women i guess i should say but uh, we appreciate them tonight i want to say uh we had uh brian here last night preached a wonderful message and uh you know, he's a seasoned veteran. He's uh, done a lot of that traveling, a lot of preaching and all that. But I can tell you this, uh, you won't hear any better preaching than what we've been having from our own little youth pastor right here. He's been doing a great job. And I appreciate him tonight. Yep. He loves these young people and him and his wife and of course, Jason and Andrea help them too, but they're all doing a great job with them. So you just help him as he preaches tonight. You mind the Lord, buddy. Amen. Once, a, once again, a wonderful place to be tonight. Amen. Amen. Appreciate, appreciate these kids, don't you? I know we say this a lot, but uh, if you think it's easy to get up here and stand and sing in front of a congregation, the microphone's free for you if you want to try it. And it's... Uh, it is a nerve-wracking thing to do, but they're willing to do it, and it blesses my heart that they are willing to do it. You know, you don't, you don't get this everywhere you go. You don't get this everywhere you go. Young people that want to sing and want to serve God. That's just something that's rare in this day and, day and time that we're living in. Amen. But I'm thankful for young people that we have here that are willing to do that. And like I've said before, you ain't got to get down and beg and, and things like that. They're just willing to do it, and I appreciate that. I appreciate their heart. And willingness to serve the Lord. And uh, like I mentioned last night, we're living in a day and time where it's hard to get adults to serve God and do anything for God. So uh, to find young people that's willing to serve God and do things for God is a rarity in this day and hour that we're living in. So I appreciate them tonight. And to uh, be honest with you, I think the crowd looks wonderful. I think there's a good crowd here tonight. And uh, uh, considering what's going on and the track meets and things like that, things closing out and and we knew that when we scheduled this, but it was just uh, every week there's something for somebody <laughs> somewhere, and it's hard to schedule something around everybody's schedule, so you just got to schedule, go on, who can come, that's wonderful, and who can't, and then uh, just sorry. Yeah, but uh, I appreciate, appreciate God most of all for being here each service, and uh, he's just been so faithful, and uh, I know like, like Tom said, Brian preached last night, and, and I can't speak for him, but I can speak for myself in saying the messages I preach Sunday, they come out totally different than what I thought they would. But that's okay. I mean, it don't make no difference. There ain't no schedule that we go by when we preach. It's just God coming and showing up and giving us what, what he's laid upon our heart. And uh, tonight I have a message. It's, it's strictly for the young people tonight. And uh, I want them to, to pay attention to what I have to say because it's the truth, what I'm about to say. And I want them to know that it's the truth. And, uh, you know, I didn't... I didn't get this message off Google or off anything like that. I got it from God. God gave this to me for our young people tonight. And uh, it's really for all of us. It could be for all of us. But those of you that have your Bible tonight and want to turn with me, I'm going to be in Genesis chapter number 15. Genesis chapter number 15. Scott told me if I preached on Peter one more time, he wasn't coming. So I'm in Genesis. I went all the way to the beginning where Peter wasn't even thought about yet. And all the way in Genesis. <laughs> he likes to kid me. Likes to kid me. But Genesis chapter number 15. Is where we'll be tonight. Genesis 15. I didn't mean to preach on Peter both times. It just happened. But uh, it was all right anyways. Genesis chapter 15. Going to start in verse number 1. Genesis 15 and verse number 1. It says this. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is the Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is thine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he shall come forth out of thy own bowels, shall be thy heir. And he brought, for, brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted unto him of righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur, out of the Chaldees, to give thee this land to inherit it. 
And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, a she-goat of three years old, a ram of three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he, to- and he took unto him all these things, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. Last verse, and this is where we're going to take our text tonight. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Abram drove them away. Here in our text tonight, and in our scripture that we just read, Abraham was in a place in his life where he was wanting to hear from God. Uh, He was actually not even wanting to hear from God. He was needing to hear from God. He was needing God to give him an answer on what he needed to do. And uh, young people, I know there's a lot of young people here, but you're scattered tonight. Young people, you are at a time in your life where you need to hear from God. You know your mom may have heard from God, and your dad may have heard from God, and your grandma and grandpa may have heard from God, but you need to hear from God as well. You need to hear from God. And that's where Abraham was in our text tonight. He needed to hear from God. Have, Have you know what I'm talking about when you're broken? You got something in your life. You need a prayer answer. You need an answer from God. You need something from Him. And you want to hear from him. And you don't care if God says yes. You don't care if God says no. You just need God to say something. Because heaven's silent. And you need him to answer your prayer. You need to know what to do in life. And we got a lot of young people here tonight. Like I said, scattered around. You're making some of the biggest decisions of your life right now. You're making some of the most important decisions of your life right now. Where you're going to go to college. Uh, Who you're going to marry. That's a big one right there. Uh, where, Where are you going to go to church when you get married. You got a lot of decisions to make. In your life right here and right now. And you need to hear from God. You don't need to do what you want to do. You don't need to do what your mommy and daddy want you to do. But I'm here to tell you tonight, you need to pray and ask God what he wants you to do. And when you do what he wants you to do, then everything in life will just take care of itself. Because you're in the perfect will of God. And there ain't a safer place in the whole wide world than in the perfect will of God. That's a safe place to be tonight. It's in the will of God, isn't it? Some of you old saints say amen right there. That's a safe place to be. Safe place to be is in the perfect will of God. So here's Abraham needing to hear from God. He wants a child more than anything in the whole wide world. And let me tell you where Abraham is at. Even though he wants a child more than anything in the whole world, in our scripture tonight, I can see Abraham's heart. I've read this scripture a lot. I see Abraham's heart, and I think he would even be okay with God saying, No, Abraham, I'm not going to give you a child. I think he wanted to hear from God so bad, he didn't care if he said yes. He didn't care if he said no. Abraham, I'll give you 25 kids. Abraham, I ain't going to give you one kid. I think Abraham was just wanting to hear from God. That's all I think he was wanting. And I'm thankful tonight on May 17, 2022, that we can still hear from the same God that Abraham heard from all the way back in Genesis chapter number 15. I've never heard God speak in an audible voice. I've never heard the clouds open up or seen the clouds open up and hear an audible voice out of heaven. I can't say that I've heard God speak uh, as far as being an audible voice tonight, but I will say this. I hope you know what I'm talking about, but I've heard God speak much louder than that. When God speaks to us and when God wants something in our life to whatever he is wants us to do there ain't no gray area there there isn't no you'll know it'll be crystal clear and i've heard young people say well Kevin, how do you know god wants me to do this how do i know that god wants me to do this because it'll be crystal clear in your life that nothing else will make sense Kev, how do i know what college to go to pray and god will make it crystal clear that's the college you're supposed to go to there won't be no gray area there won't be no blur or slur but god will point his finger on where you need to be. Caleb, how do I know who I'm supposed to marry? And this is what I heard my whole life. Well, you just know. Isn't that what people say? When you're looking for a wife, you're looking for a husband, you tell young people, well, you'll just know. And I've always, you know, when I was a young person, I thought that's the dumbest thing I ever heard my whole life. How do you just know? But buddy, after I met my wife in about two hours, I knew, man, right then, that's who God with you just know i don't know how to explain that to you but you just do and when god puts his hand on something tonight you just do you just know it's crystal clear i'm thankful you can hear from god tonight can you, are, you are, have anybody ever heard from god before you're all looking at me like hey god speaks to us yeah he speaks to us you can hear from god still in this day and hour god can speak to us tonight he can and he spoke to abraham so abraham heard from god he heard from god but not only did he hear from god but look what the bible says The Bible says in verse number 6, And he believed in the Lord and counted unto him of righteousness. So not only did Abraham hear from God, but the Bible says that he believed God as well. I'm thankful tonight for a group of people that believe in God, aren't you? 
we just don't believe that he's alive or that believe he's in heaven, but I believe him for who he says he is, what he says he is. Everything the Bible says about God is true. And when God says something, you don't have to second guess yourself. You can take it to the bank, honey. It's going to happen. Maybe not in your timing, but I promise it'll happen in God's timing tonight. It will. You can hear from God. Abraham heard from God. He believed God. And, and to be real honest with you, it's, it's easy to hear from God. And it's easy for me tonight to believe in God. But here's the You ready? Here's the hard one. He even had to obey God. He had to obey God. That's the tough one right there. If we could get about 25% of the church to obey God, preacher would probably never have to preach. I mean, if we could get just a few people to obey what God wanted them to do, preacher would only have to probably preach for about five minutes. That's all he'd need to do. But for whatever reason, we sit back relaxed and just chill and just, well, praise God, you know, a good sermon, good singing, good sermon. Let's go to the house, get us a bologna sandwich, and go to bed. That's just what people are, just how people are nowadays. It just seems like we're always in a hurry. We come to church. Scott, hurry up, get a song. Hurry up, get the singers up there. Tommy, hurry up, get the message over with. I got to go to Toro Loco. I got to go to Applebee's. I got to go home and catch my movie before it is. I mean, we're always in a hurry everywhere we go, but yet we go to a ball game and it goes to overtime, and we'll sit there and not complain one second about it. Where's our priorities tonight? It's not, you all are liking that real well. I'm going to move on away from that. Obey God. That's the tough one. That's the tough one. Obeying God. It's easy to hear from God. Get down on your knees. Pray. You'll hear from me if you want to hear from me. It's easy for me to believe God. He's been faithful in my life. He's been faithful in your life. So it's easy for me to believe in him. Believe that he's real. Believe in his spirit. I believe him tonight. But man, let's just be real. Let's just get down to where we're living. It can be hard to obey God. But can I say tonight, Abraham wanted a child more than anything in the whole wide world. And I believe if God would have said, Abraham, stand on your head, count to 100, and try to run in a straight line. I believe Abraham would have stood on his head, counted to 100, and tried to run in a straight line. Why? Because he wanted a child more than anything in the whole wide world. Heard from God, he believed God, and here's the one he had to do. That was the hard one. He even had to obey God. He had to obey God. Had to do what he said. Well, Caleb, what did God tell Abraham to do? He told him to do something kind of peculiar, kind of, kind of different. He told him to go. Told him to get a heifer of three years old, a goat of three years old, a ram of three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. That's what God told Abraham to do. He told him to get these things. He told him to lay them on the altar. Told him to lay them on the altar as a sacrifice. And we need to know tonight and we need to understand that God was the one that gave Abraham the sacrifice. That's the first thing we need to understand tonight. God was the one that provided the sacrifice. He's the one that gave Abraham the sacrifice. It wasn't because of who Abraham was or the money he had. God was the one that gave him to him. Agree with me tonight on this. Every good thing we have in life has come from our master tonight. It's come from him. It doesn't matter how much money we make in a year, how nice our car is, how junky our car is, how big our home, how small our home. Everything we have tonight, our master gave it to us. Say, Caleb, I own my house. It's in my name. No, it's not your house. God's the one that gave it to you. He's the one that gave you the hands to work with. He's the one that gave you the air to breathe. He's the one to give you the feet to get to where you needed to go. Everything we have tonight is because our master gave it to us. Everybody say amen. Amen. We don't own anything. We don't own our money. We don't own our homes. We don't own our vehicles. I'm not even controlling myself tonight. Everything that I have is because my master has given it to me tonight. Amen. Young people, believe this. Everything you have in your life is because our master gave it to us tonight. Everything that Abraham had was because his master gave it to him. Because his master gave it to him. That's why Abraham found himself on his knees and said, God, I need to hear from you. I believe in you. And whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Because I want a child more than anything else in the whole wide world. And there's some young people here tonight that want God more than anything else in the whole wide world. And you've heard from him and you believe in him. But now comes the hard one. you got to obey him. got to obey him. It's hard to get grown-ups to obey him. It's hard to get middle-aged people to obey him. Hard to get young people to obey him. But I can promise you a blessed and prosperous life is waiting on you when you obey and do what God tells you to do. That's the truth. Saints, say amen. 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 That's the truth. So Abraham heard from God. He believed God. And here he is getting his goat and his, his, uh, his heifer and everything that God told him to get. Here's Abraham up all the sacrifices, and here he is placing them on the altar. That was my introduction. To, that was, I know that was kind of a long introduction, 
But I'm getting to where I want to go right now, okay? He heard from God, believed God, he obeyed God. And here's the sacrifices. He placed them on the altar. Placed them on the altar like God told him to do, obeying God. Laid them there, but verse number 11 says this. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Drove them away. You know what them fowls were? They were vultures. They were vultures. And you know what they was trying to do? They was trying to steal what Abraham's master had given to him. They was trying to steal the blessing that Abraham had on the altar. The vultures was trying to steal it. And listen to me loud and listen to me clear. The vultures are flying over us right now as I'm preaching to you. The vultures are flying over our head right now as I'm speaking to you. And we have a choice to make tonight. We can stand. The Bible says that Abraham had to drive them away. Here's what Abraham had to do. Here's his, here's, his, here's his heifer. Here's his pigeon. Here's his turtle dove. Here's everything Abraham placed on the altar. And here come the vultures flying around. Abraham, oh no, what am I going to do? What I'm gonna, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says he drove them away. That means he had to... He was... I mean, they was flying around, flying around, flying. And Abraham said, you know what? God gave this to me. I don't know if he's going to give me a child or not. I don't know if he's going to give me what I want. But God gave this to me. This is mine. These are my sacrifices. And I'm not going to let the vultures fly around what God gave me and pick on it. You know what Christian people are doing today? I'm going to preach to you a little bit. You know what Christian people are doing today? Well, bless God. God gave them to me. God gave them to me. And I've, I've, I've served the Lord a long time. I've been in this thing a long time. I don't think I can fight anymore. I'm too tired. I'm too, I can't fight. The vultures have circled, and they've circled, and they've circled. And I got news tonight. The vultures are still circling, and they're still circling, and they're still circling. And I can tell you something tonight. The vultures ain't ever going to go away. They're always going to be circling these young people, trying to get them to slip up, fall, get with the wrong woman, get with the wrong guy, get with the wrong friends. But if I could find some young people tonight to say, Kev, I'll fight back the vultures. Let me raise my hand and tell you, Kev, I'll fight back the vultures in my life. Listen, you know why we have such a wicked and an evil generation. I'm thankful for young people that want to serve God, but it's hard to get young people on fire for God when their parents sit at the house on a lazy boy chair, watch TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram when they need to get their nose in the Word of God. We need to get parents fighting vultures back so the kids can live a little bit. Now we're living in a day and hour where the parents sit at home, do anything they want to do. We got young people here tonight serving God, three rows full of young people tonight saying, Kev, I'll fight the vultures back. I'll, I'll do the work. I'll put in the time. I'll fight the vultures in my in your life and in my life tonight. Hey Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Hey Amen. If I could find some bombs, if I could find some dads to say, hey, let me fight back the vultures. If I could find some young people to say, hey, I'll fight back the vultures. We would have a revival like this holler ain't ever seen before. But in order to do it, we got to find some people that's going to stand up and fight for the vultures. He had to drive them away. I mean, he had to, everything he could do to get them vultures to go away. I'm telling you the truth tonight. They're going to fly around and fly around and fly around. You know what we live in today? We lived in a confused generation. I mean, they don't know if they want to be a boy. They don't know if they want to be a girl. They don't know if they want to love a boy. They don't know if they want to love a girl. They don't know what bathroom to use. Let me tell you, I'm talking about vultures. In 2022, we're fought vultures like we ain't ever fought before. And we need some young people to rise up and say, Cab, I'll fight back the vultures. I'll fight back the devil. I'll fight back the sin. We need that tonight. We need that tonight. Amen. We need it. If you're waiting for the vultures to go away, you're going to be waiting for a very long time. They ain't ever going to go away. They're going to fly around and fly around and fly around. And here's where we're at today. People's got tired of fighting. And they put down their Bible. They got off their knees and stopped praying. And they said, you know what? I can't fight no more. Vultures, have your way with what God gave me. And that's why you see homes split right down the middle. That's why you've seen young people turn to sex, drugs, and alcohol at 16 years old. Because parents have gave up. Grandparents have gave up. Young people have gave up. Can I say that? I ain't going to give up. I ain't going to stop. I'm going to continue to fight with every ounce of energy I have left in me tonight. If I find myself standing alone, then guess what? I find myself standing alone. I've made my mind up tonight. I'm going to serve God regardless of what anybody else does, regardless of what anybody else is going to do. I'm going to serve the Lord. Woo! Glory to 
God. I'm going to serve him tonight. I'm going to serve him. Amen. Vultures. Vultures. Ain't ever going to go away. Every good thing God has given Caleb Brown, the vultures are circling over. God's given me a good wife. He's given me good kids. He's put health in our body. He's given me good air to breathe. He's given me a good mom and dad. He's given me good family. He's given me good air to breathe. He's put food on my table. He's put clothes on my back. He's put air in my lungs. God's been better to me than I deserve tonight. And I'm going to fight with every ounce of energy I have to keep the vultures away. Thank God forever. Amen. Amen. I'm determined now more than ever. I get sick, man. I get tired of it. I'm just going to tell you where I'm at. I get tired of seeing the devil slip in and find a young person on fire for God and the devil begin to do a work, begin to do something, give them the wrong girl, give them the wrong boy, give them the wrong friends, and boom, man, they're gone. Just like that. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. It's deep, it's nasty, and it's dirty. There's the vulture of sin. <laughs> it's a vulture. Sin gets a hold of you. You may think to yourself, you may think to yourself, well, Kev, I got control over my sin. Next thing you know, honey, that sin's got a hold of you, and you, you find yourself as low as you can possibly go. Find yourself as low as you can go. All because of some wrong choices with some wrong people. Sin. Sin is a vulture. There ain't nothing pretty about sin. You know what people find out? They hit rock bottom. There's pleasure in sin for how long? What people don't understand is that season comes and goes so quickly. You know what comes after the pleasure? Misery. Misery. Miserable. People become miserable. You, ever, you know somebody right now that's miserable? I know a whole bunch of them. I know a whole bunch of them. All because of some wrong choices with some wrong people. Vultures flew over and they said, here you go. Here you go. I ain't going to fight no more. Do I have people that's going to fight with me tonight? I look at what God's given us. I look at what he's given us. The devil will tell you you ain't got nothing. He'll tell you you ain't got nothing. Tell you you ain't got nothing. You know what I do? I look at what remains in my life. I look at what remains. You know what keeps me going? I look at a wife God gave me to serve the Lord with. I look at little Macy. I look at little Tinley. Tell me I ain't got something to fight for. <laughs> I look at these young people who live busy, busy lives. Many of them come to me. Okay, but I don't know if I can make it here that night. I don't know if I can make it that night. But here they come. And they get here and they'll say, Kev, I'm tired. But I'm here. I'm here. Tell me I ain't got something to fight for. You got something to fight for. You got grandkids. You got something to fight for. You got kids. You got something to fight for. You got something to fight for. Last night, we got home by 11 o'clock. We got home by 11 o'clock. We put the girls to bed. My youngest one, pray for me. My youngest one was all tore up, you know. We laid her in her bed, and she started singing. Well, I can't ever hardly understand her. Somehow, I don't. Macy does. I don't know how. Something about that connection there. I mean, she talks to me, and I say, Honey, this ain't Pentecostal. <laughs> Just chill out. I can't understand her. I mean, she could be going on and on. I don't understand nothing. And Macy can understand every word she says. I mean, she'll tell me for 15 minutes she wants something. And, she, and Macy will be like, Dad, she wants a cookie. I mean, something so simple. I'm like, man, I can't understand. But last night, we got home from church. And we put her to bed, and she was mad. But we laid her in that bed and put her on that pillow, and she started singing. Carry on now, my brothers. Carry on now, my sisters. And I didn't understand her. Jessica said, you see what she's singing? Hear what she's singing? I said, no, I can't understand it. She said, listen a little bit closer. She said, carry on now. I, I, like I said, I can't understand. I couldn't understand her. She went on, 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 on. And finally, Jessica said, carry on now, my brother. And then I, once she said that, I could hear it plain as day. Plain as day. And at the end, I shut the door, and I, and I shut the door. She was still in there singing, carry on now, my brothers. Carry on now, my sisters. You know where she heard that? She was listening to Joe Biden's speech the other night and heard it on there. No, that's not where she heard it. That's not where she heard it. She heard it right here in this church with these people. Tell me I ain't got something to fight for. You know what we got to do? 
we got to drive them away. we got to drive them away. With every ounce of energy we have, we have to drive them away. I shut that door, and she even hit the ending. When love's got a hold of you, and I thought, man, man. God's gave me a lot to fight for. Give me a lot to fight for. Look at these young people. I, the other night, or yeah, the other night, Miss Lydia comes up to me. She said, Kev, I've been reading a lot in the Bible. Been reading a lot, and I've been writing stuff down. And the next thing I know, I got five or six lessons. She said, I think it'd be good if maybe here and again you let one of us teach. I said, well, you're teaching Sunday morning. Teach it Sunday morning. You know our next pastor could be sitting right here. Our next Sunday school teachers could be sitting right here. Our next song leader could be sitting right here. We have to fight to keep the vultures away. Vultures away. You know, I, I talk about the vulture of sin. I could, I could preach for an hour tonight about vultures because there's a lot of them out there. Sin's a big one. The devil himself is a vulture. He likes to trick young people. He likes to trick them, get them slipped up. I was reading the other day about the, about the young man who inherited the vineyard. You know the story. He inherited the, uh, the vineyard, and the king come by and said, Man, that's the most beautiful vineyard i ever seen. I got one even prettier than this. Won't you trade me? Trick. A trick. Why would somebody trade a prettier vineyard for another vineyard to trick them? Picture of the devil. He likes to trick us. Likes to trick us. There's the vulture of sin. There's the vulture of devil. There's the vulture of people. Amen. People can be vultures. They can. And in a time such as this, I'll just go ahead and say this. People are vultures because they're dry. I mean, they're as dry as a summer day in August. They're dry. They're dry. I was, you all know the story about the preacher who stood over the valley of dry bones. You know the story. Stood over the valley of dry bones and God come to the preacher and he said, Son of man, can these bones live? The Bible said they was very dry. They have been dead and they have been dry for a long time. And God comes and said, Son of man, can these bones live? And when God asks a question, he don't need an answer. He already knows the answer. But I believe this prophet gave the best answer you could possibly give. This is what he said. He said, Lord God, thou knowest. In other words, he said, God, you're the one that give them life in the first place. And if there's anything that can give them life again, it can only be done by you. And you know what God told this man to do? He told him to preach to the wind. Told him to preach to these dry bones and preach to the wind. And to make a long story short, these bones that was dry, the Bible said when he stood out over the valley of dry bones and began to preach, the Bible says he heard a noise. And he heard a shake. And the Bible says these bones came together bone to his bone. And to make a long story short, the Bible, by the time God got done with these dry bones, they stood as an exceeding great army. God can take a dry person, a broke person, and come to an altar, and they get up, not, no longer dry, no longer broken, but stand up, and the army of God, an exceeding great army, is what the Bible says. You can be dry. The devil could be pushing on you. Sin may have a hold on you. There's vultures after vulture after vulture I could preach on tonight. There is. There is. And I look at these young people, and I can't help but, I can't help but, but worry. I can't help but worry. I say, what do you worry about? They, you know, they get up, they sing, they volunteer. You know, what, what do you worry about? I know there's, a, there's vultures out there. I know there's a devil out there. I understand that. I understand that. And that's why it blesses my heart to see them want to serve God and be here, do their part, sing, their faithfulness. It blesses my heart. I can't help it. I can't help it. Watch little Olivia get up here, sing, beautiful. Watch the Satterfield boys and Haley get up here, sing, beautiful. Blesses my heart. It does. I can't help it but sit there and just swell up and, and know that we have a future here. A lot of churches can't get up and say that, but we have a future here. We have a future right here. The other, I, I hope it's okay if I, if I tell this, but the other night, actually it was last night, I was talking to Mr. and Mrs. Shipley sitting back here. I was talking to them, and I was, I was wanting to let them know what good kids they raised, is what we was talking about. And she said, you know, when Tanner was a sophomore, said he started going to Shawnee. Uh, he, you know, super smart. I, I taught him everything I could with the time I had, but, but he's real smart. And 
And uh, some of you will get that tomorrow. It's okay. You can smile. We're, it's all right. We're at church, but you can laugh if you want to. If you want to sit there and look grouchy, go ahead. I ain't going to hurt your feelings. But uh, we were talking about that and said, you know, when, when he started going to Shawnee, he said his buddies would call him. His buddies would call him and say, Tanner, man, we miss you. Won't you come hang out with us? We're going to be in the barn, and, and we're going to hang out. Won't you, won't you come and hang out? And she said, Keb, he never would. He never would. Said so he would just you know, stay home, hang out at the house, and never would never go. And she said, I always didn't, I, I didn't understand why he wouldn't want to go hang out with his friends that he no longer seen from high school. She said, so finally one day, I believe she said she asked Wiley, she said, why, why, doesn't, why doesn't your brother want to go do anything with his buddies from school? She said, well, Mom, they drink, they carry on, they, they do things. Said, Tanner, don't want nothing to do with that. Don't want nothing to do with that. Man. Don't want nothing to do with it. There's still young people that's fighting. There's still young people that's got to got to hold on God, and God's got to hold on them. Got to hold on them. Amen. We just, as a church, got to fight the vultures back. We have to. We got to keep fighting. As, as as tired as we may get, as weary as we may get, somewhere along the line, God will give us the strength that we need to stand and fight. When the vultures come circling you, you have two options. You have two options. You can cross your arms. And watch them destroy everything God's gave you. Or you can get a rod in your hand. You can get the word of God. And you can fight back the vultures that's flying over your life. I get tired. I get sick and tired of seeing the devil destroy people. Not young people. Everyone. Everyone. People so weary. People so broke. Vultures flying over them. Picking apart their whole life. And it's almost like they're just, they're so used to it. They're stuck where they're at. Life don't have to be that way tonight. We serve a powerful God and a wonderful Savior who's here and can fix your problem in about five seconds. In about five seconds. You know God God can do more in five seconds than what we could do in five years. You believe that tonight? You believe that? He can do more in just a few seconds than what we could do in a lifetime. I've mentioned this before, but I could preach on being broke tonight, and you could be sitting here with your heart shattered into a thousand pieces, broken in half. And you may say, well, that message was for me, but I think I'm just going to go home with my brokenness. When you've got a God here tonight that can put those broken pieces back together again. I had a young lady Sunday morning come to me with tears in her eyes, and she said, Caleb, that message was just for me. I should have been on the altar. Mom, I can't, I can't go back and grab you by the ear, drag you up here, and make you pray. It's something you have to do on your own. I wanted to say, you mean to tell me I've gained 10 pounds, stressed out, <laughs> uh, didn't sleep last night for you to tell me you should have prayed? Bless your heart. You know, you get aggravated when people waller in their brokenness and their misery when God is here and able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. I don't care what it is you need tonight. I don't care if it looks impossible. We serve a God that specializes in impossible. He can do anything we need Him to do fix anything we need him to fix, put things back together that we need put back together again. We serve a God like that tonight. I'm going to ask you if you would stand with me. I'm going to ask Jeff to come to the piano if he would. I'm going to ask him if he'd come to the piano. Whatever it is God's laid on your heart tonight, whatever it is you're battling with, whatever it is you're struggling with, my goodness sakes, God is here tonight, and he can put those things back together again. Please don't leave here broken. Please don't leave here miserable. I know the vultures are there and they're powerful and they they have some power over us, but we serve a powerful God. We serve a powerful God. Amen. Would you come tonight? I got plenty of tissues out for you. It's all right. Won't you come tonight? Won't you come? Why in the world go home? Why in the world go home? Young people, moms, dads, it don't matter. Whatever it is tonight you need, God can do it. He's able to. He's able to. Amen. Would you come tonight? Would you come? I tried not to preach long. Hope I didn't. Would you come? Would you come? Amen. 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 Anybody tonight? Anybody at all? Just for a few moments. Just for a few moments. Nobody looking around. 
So, Kim, I'm here tonight. The vultures have had their way in my life. They've had their way in my life, and I'm sick of living like this. I'm tired of living like this. I don't want to live like this no more. Would you please pray for me? Would you please pray for me? Would you slip your hand up? Kayla, please pray for me. Anybody at all? seem to be clear. I gave you tonight what God gave me. Gave you what He gave me. And that's all I know to do. That's all I know to do. Amen. You know when uh, when I get when I get up here or anywhere for that matter to preach. You know, for the longest time, I always worried. You know what 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 people think of me. You know when you when you spit and you jump and you know never know. Throw a chair. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's not in my notes. Throw a chair right here. I mean, that's not in there. You know, it's just, it's just. Uh, I, I don't plan to do that. And uh, for the longest time, I even pray, God, settle me down a little bit when I get up there. Calm me down a little bit when I get up there. But it just seems like the more I prayed that, man, the more fired up I just got. I can't help it. It just, I mean, it just comes out one gear, and I can't slow it down. I can't stop it. It's just, it just happens. And. Uh, I don't ever want people to think that I'm trying to be a show or trying to be an entertainer. I just uh, get up here, open the book, and it comes out the way it comes out, and I can't help it. I can't. I've heard Burnett apologize. You know, she she always say, you know, I know I don't look ladylike right now, but uh, you know, she preaches back there in, in her classroom, and she always says that. But uh, you know, I like something that's alive, don't you? I like that. I like something that's alive and real, and. Uh, I know nobody come and, and prayed tonight, and I didn't see no hands raised or anything. But I know good and well there's vultures in your life. And there's vultures in my life. And I know we do need help to fight them back. So let's just pray for each other. How about that? Let's pray for each other. Pray for these young people. Pray for everybody here tonight. Let's pray for one another. Help carry one another. Because them vultures are getting more and more and more. More and more and more. And, uh... I know with the help of one another, it makes the load a lot easier. I say this a lot. I, I say all we have in this life is God and each other. And that's it. That's it. We have God, you have me, and I have you. We have each other. And that's enough. That's enough to get us home anyways, isn't it? Amen. Well, I've gave you my heart tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, 730 again. Uh, there, there is a chance of rain for tomorrow night. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. We may have to move it over in the sanctuary. I don't know. Uh, but uh, th this tent's getting pretty saggy, so I'm getting a little bit nervous. If it were to rain, we better go to the church. You don't want no accidents out here. But uh, but uh, like I said, tomorrow night, 730, I'll be doing the preaching, and uh, we'll, some of these young people, once again, will be singing for you. So uh, God bless you all. I thank you all so very much for coming. Like I said, this is a youth revival, so I appreciate each one of you for making the time out of your busy schedule on a pretty evening to come to this. So uh, tomorrow night, 730, go home. Uh, God bless you, and hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow night.